Hello everyone, this is John Hashmat and welcome to Physics Simply. In this video, I will be solving the paper 6 exam for May-June 2024 variant 1. So let's get started. Question 1 says, a student investigates the stretching of a spring. Figure 1.1 shows the setup. We have a spring hanging from a clamp and the ruler standing vertically. Part A says, a student measures and records in table 1.1 the unstretched length L0 of the spring. He does not include the loops at the ends of the spring in the measurement. The value L0 is the length of the spring when the load L on the spring is 0.00 newton. Describe one technique you would use to obtain an accurate value for L0. Draw a diagram to illustrate your answer. So we can draw the spring like this as zigzag lines and the ruler next to it as a rectangle. Now we can say that we will take two readings at the top and bottom of the spring and we will be looking perpendicular to the scale 90 degrees so we have reading one and reading two and this is the rule this is the spring we must label the diagram and we say look perpendicular to the scale to get r1 and r2 then calculate l0 is equal to r1 minus r2 or r2 minus r1 according to which way the zero of the meter rule is pointing or we can just write without drawing since uh, it says you may draw a diagram. Part B says the student suspends the load L equals 1.00 Newton from the spring. He records the new length L of the spring in table 1.1. He calculates the extension E of the spring using the equation E is equal to L minus L naught and records the value of E in table 1.1. The student repeats the procedure using loads of 2, 3, 4, 5.00 Newtons. The readings and results are recorded in table 1.1. Calculate the extension E of the spring using the equation E is equal to L minus L naught when L is equal to 5 newtons. Record this value of E in table 1.1. So this is L naught when the load is equal to 0. And we have the new length here. So we subtract 23.7 minus 2.1, which gives an answer of 21.6 centimeters. Part C says plot a graph of L per Newton on the y-axis against E per centimeter on the x-axis. Start both axes at the origin, 0 and 0, draw the best fit line. First, we label the axes, load per Newton and E per centimeter. For the y-axis, we have increments of 1s, so we can use these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. As for the x-axis, the largest number was 21.6 and the minimum number here for the graph to start from the origin is 0. We divide by the number of the horizontal divisions. We have 6 large divisions. That gives an answer of 3.6. Comparing that to 1s or 2s or 5s, 1 and 2 is too small. We choose 5. So you go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 and so on. Now we plot the points. The first point was at 0 and 0. So we have a dot here. Next we have 1 Newton with 3.9. So this is almost 4. So at this point. Next we have 2 and 8.5. So this is 9. This is 8.5. Next we have 3 and 12.8. So this is 14. This is 13. 12.8 would be just before it. Next, we have 4 with 17.2. This is 16, 17.2 would be just after it. Last point is 5 and 21.6. This is 21, this is 21.5.6 would be just after it. First, we try connecting the first and last points and see if it goes as a best fit line. Okay, we can leave it as it is. Only one point is out of the line. Part D says determine the gradient G of the graph, show all your working and indicate on the graph the values you use. Going back to the graph, we need to find points with good intersection with the grid of the graph. For example, I have this point here with Y coordinates 4.4. And from the other side, I have this point, which is here at 0 0.7. We draw a triangle to indicate which points we used. So a vertical line from the top point and a horizontal line from the bottom point. As for the coordinates on the x-axis, we have here the value of 3. And on the other side here, we have 19. So 4.4 minus 0.7 divided by 19 minus 3. This gives me an answer of 0 0.23. The y-axis has a unit Newton and the x-axis has a unit of centimeters. So it's Newtons per centimeter. 
Part E says G is numerically equal to the spring constant K. Record the value of K to a suitable number of significant figures for this experiment. Include the unit. So it is the same number, 0 0.23 and newtons per centimeter. And I wrote it to two significant figures since the numbers from the graph are approximately to two significant figures. And this three it was actually 3.0 and 19 was 19.0. So the minimum number of significant figures was two significant figures. So we wrote the answer to two significant figures. We have a power supply switch connected to an ammeter and a resistance wire with a voltmeter connected across a part of the wire. Part E says the student measures the current I in the circuit. She places the sliding contact S at a distance D equals 50.0 centimeters from side B. She measures the potential difference V50 across the length D of the resistance wire. Figure 2.2 shows the ammeter and voltmeter readings. Record the readings on the voltmeter and ammeter. Include the units. So for the ammeter, we have 0 0.3 in the middle. So these are five divisions. Each division is 0 0.0. Two. So 0 0.32, 0 0.34, 0 0.36, that would be 0 0.36 amperes. And for the voltmeter, we have five divisions between 1 and 2. Each division is 0 0.2. So 1.2, 1.4. And the unit here is volts. Power double I says calculate the resistance R50 of the 50.0 centimeters of resistance wire using the equation R50 is equal to V50 divided by I. So we divide 1.4 by 0 0.36. That gives uh, an approximate value of 3.9 ohms. Double I says calculate R1, a value for the resistance per centimeter of the resistance wire using the equation R1 is equal to R50 over D. So we divide 3.9 by 50.0. That gives an answer of 0 0.078. And the unit here is the unit of resistance per the unit of the length which was here in centimeters. But B says the student repeats the procedure in A using D equal 75.0 centimeters and calculates R2 using the equation R2 is equal R75 over D and we have the voltage, resistance and R2. A student suggests that the resistance per centimeter of the resistance wire is constant. We have two values 0 0.081 and 0 0.078. State whether your results support this suggestion that they are equal or not and justify with referring to the results. So these values are approximately the same. The difference is very small. So we say yes, since the difference is within limits of experimental accuracy. For double I says the student plans to plot a graph of resistance R against the length D to test the suggestion, suggest suitable additional values for length D to use. We already had 50 and 75, we can add 55, 60, 65, 70. So we have five values or more. We can also write them as 0 .0, 0, 0.0, and so on to have the same precision as the question. And the unit is centimeters. Part C says a variable resistor is a circuit component that can be made using a coil of resistance wire. Draw the electrical symbol for a variable resistor. We have a rectangle with an arrow across and two terminals to connect in the circuit. Question three says a student investigates the image produced by a lens. Figure 3.1 shows the setup. We have the illuminated object, the lens and the screen on a bench. Part A says figure 3.2 shows the height H naught of the illuminated object. On figure 3.2 measure H naught. So using a ruler, we measure the distance between the edges of the arrow. This is approximately 1.6. Writing it down 1.6 centimeters. Part B says figure 3.1 is drawn to scale. The actual distance U between the illuminated object and the lens is 20.0 centimeters. On figure 3.1, measure the distance X. Again, using the ruler, the distance X is approximately 2 centimeters. We write it as 2.0 centimeters. Calculate the scale ratio R using the equation U over X. So u is 20.0 and x is 2.0. That gives an answer of 10. And there is no unit. Part C says the student moves the screen until a focused image is formed on the screen. On figure 3.1, measure the distance y. Going back, we measure the distance y using the ruler. This is approximately 6.2. So 6.2 centimeters. 
Double I calculate the actual distance V between the length and the screen using the equation V is equal to RY using your value of R from B double I. So we multiply 6.2 by 10, which was the value of R. That gives an answer of 62. Part D says calculate the focal length F of the lens using the equation U V over U plus V. So U was 20.0, V was 62 divided by 20 plus 62. That gives an approximate value of 15 or 15.1 centimeters. Part E says in this type of experiment, it can be difficult to judge the screen position that produces the clearest image, suggest two precautions or techniques to overcome this difficulty. We can say perform experiment in a dark room, or we can say keep moving the screen forward and backward until you get the best image. Part F says figure 3.2 shows the shape of the illuminated object. The image of the object is enlarged. Draw a diagram to show the image that you would see on the screen. If the object was a triangle pointing upwards, the image should be inverted, which means a triangle pointing downwards. So it should be something like this. And we draw it larger than the original shape of the illuminated object since the image is enlarged. Question 4 says a student investigates the bending of composite strips of wood when they are loaded at one end. The composite strips are made from identical layers of wood stuck together as shown in figure 4.1. Plan an experiment to investigate how much composite strips bend when they are loaded at one end. Figure 4.2 shows the setup the student uses. The student has a number of composite strips made with two or more layers of wood. We have a G-clamp here holding the strip at the edge of a bench. In your plan, state the variable that you are testing as, a, as an independent variable. List any additional apparatus that you would use. Explain briefly how to do the investigation. State the key variables to keep constant. Draw a table or tables with column headings to show how to display your readings. You are not required to enter any readings in the table. Explain how to use your readings to reach a conclusion. So here we can say that we will test the number of uh, layers of the strip or the thickness of the strip, or we can change the loads using the same strip. For me, I'm going to go with number of layers as the independent variable. And for the dependent variable, the amount of bending, we can measure the distance fallen by the edge of the strip by adding a pointer here towards a meter rule. And I'm going to make sure that the rule is vertical using a set square. So we label that also set square. And this is a pointer. Now we can start writing by saying make strips of different number of layers, but have the same length and width. Then we say set up apparatus as shown in the diagram using the first strip. Then we record the reading R1 on the meter rule without any loads on the strip. After that, we add a load to the end of the strip and record the new reading R2 on the meter rule. Then we calculate the distance fallen by the pointer. For example, I'm going to call it D, which is equal to R1 minus R2. So the pointer was pointing towards a higher reading at first, then when the strip bends, the pointer points towards a lower reading. So this is R1 and this is R2. And the distance falling from there to there is the distance that represents the bending. Now we repeat all steps for strips of different number of layers, but using the same load. So we have length, width, and the load as controlled variables. Now we draw the table. We have number of layers. As an independent variable, we measured reading one per centimeter, reading two per centimeter, and we calculated the distance D per centimeter. Now we close the table and we do not enter any values in the columns of the headings. We can say plot a graph of number of layers on the X axis against D per centimeter on the Y axis, since D is the dependent variable. This was the end of the exam. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful to you. Keep practicing and I will see you in another video.